Tales Grey Route, Chapter 11. Here we go. Nikki? Oh, oh we're going to see Nikki. Enter auditorium, my voice, uh, yeah, auditorium, my voice echoing off the walls as I glance around the space for a sign of my old friend. The school day has just ended with swarms of students leaving the grounds right as I arrived. Seeing them in the halls and filing out of their classrooms has sent a wave of nostalgia rushing over me. The fact that this is the second time this week that I've been back at this school is just a strange feeling in and of itself. Checking over messages from Nikki once more, I scroll to make sure that this is where I'm supposed to meet him. Hey, would you go over here? A voice both familiar and strange echoes through the space, and I looked up to find Nikki walking out on the stage in front of me. Oh my god. Nikki. Nikki, damn. Damn, Nikki. <laughs> Nikki is... Hot teacher. <laughs> he smiles as I approach, resting his hands on his hips while I take the side stairs up onto the wooden stage. Oh my god, don't get any closer, Jesus. Nikki, it's been so long, I say as I extend his arms and hugs me in a greeting. Too long, he chuckles softly. Dang, you looking nice! Jesus. <laughs> his warm breath ruffles, uh, breath ruffles my hair, and when he pulls back, I get a good look at him, hardly recognizing the man in front of me as the boy I knew ten years ago. He must have been a late bloomer, because where he once stood a good few inches shorter than I am, he now towers over me. Not only that, but the glasses and his and uh, glasses and slacks he wears only add to his mature appearance. As a teacher, he definitely looks the part. Wow, when did you get so old? I joke, and he lets out a sort of snort of laughter. Look who's talking! Aroma has turned into a full-blown adult. Who would have thought? Yeah, yeah. I wave a dismissive hand in front of me, enjoying the easy banter. Nikki puts his hand on his hip, still grinning broadly. So, what did you bring me bring for me to look over? He asks. He gestures for me to take a seat with him on the edge of the stage, and I sit and open the bag I brought with me, pulling out a few different fabric swatches and a notebook. The costumes are ready to be put together, so all I need is your approval on the designs and fabric. I then flip open my notebook, showing Nikki the designs I had put together for the costumes. They're perfect, he says with a girl, tracing a finger over the paper, exactly what I had in mind. And now the most important part, the fabric, I say as I spread the swatches out between us. For Romeo's tunic that wears the green or the navy, with silver or gold for the trim, whichever one you don't choose, I can use for... Mercutio? Uh, let's go with that one, Nikki says as he points to the dark blue swatch with a silver trim. Okay, great. I scribbled a choice on my notebook next to Romeo's design. And for Julia, I was thinking of this one here. I show him the scarlet velvet. He nods his approval. Honestly, you've got a better eye than I do for these things. What you put together already looks great. I'm excited to see the final product. I'm glad he asked me to help with the costumes, I say honestly as I make a few more notes. It's nice to do something a bit different every now and then. And I still can't believe you work here. <laughs> yeah, with the soft laughter, glancing around the place. It's so weird. It's actually a pretty good gig. Nikki says with a chuckle as he pushes his glasses up the bridge of his nose. I like being able to keep an eye on this place. Make sure our rivals don't get too comfortable. Nice to see your motives haven't changed, I say with a small giggle. <laughs> Laughing together, Nikki feels like our, feels just like our old school days, as if barely anything has changed at all. When the amusement finally fades, he gives me a meaningful look. Does it feel strange being back here after all these years? It's actually not the first time I've been back, I say without thinking, quickly wishing I could take it back. He raises a curious eyebrow. It's not. When were you last here? Or here last? I give him a tight smile and rack my brain for an excuse, something that won't raise his suspicions. Sarah I wanted to come by and visit a few weeks ago, for old time's sake, you know? You should have let me know. We could have made it a real reunion, he says with a fond smile. More lies on top of more lies. Great job, girly. <laughs> I let out the breath I've been holding, saying no more. I feel bad about lying to Nikki, but it's not like I can just go ahead and tell him the real reason I was here. He'd never understand. But then another thought occurs to me. Nikki has always been great at getting information and knowing everything that there is to know about the people around here. Perhaps I could use that to my advantage once again. Hey, do you remember Ivan Novak? I asked him, attempting to keep my tone casual. The hammer. Sure, everyone remembers him. Do you know what happened to him? He thinks quiet, quietly for a second. He disappeared out of school. There were plenty of different rumors going around. Some say he joined a bigger gang. Others that he was selling drugs. Knowing Ivan, neither of those options would surprise me. He showed up again about two years ago, looking buff as hell. Caused a bit of trouble around town with a couple of buddies, working up uh, gambling debts that got him banned for, from few establishments, or, or so I hear. Snow's wrinkles and when he said, <laughs> when his eyes settle on me. I haven't heard anything about him in a little while now. Why do you, why do you ask? Oh, no reason, I, ask this, I say dismissively. It was just something I was thinking about. Nikki nods slowly, his voice quiet when he speaks mm. next. 
Aroma, the hammer, and the phantom. You all disappeared, didn't you? The phantom. I start <laughs> after hearing Gray's old nickname spoken out loud. A little buzz going through me. From the Capel High, remember? Nikki asked with a furrowed brow. He and Ivan are buddies now, or so I hear. He shakes his head as he thinks about it, his face darkening. I don't know what they're up to together, but with the both of them involved, it can't be anything good. <sighs> I swallow hard, finding it increasingly difficult to look Nikki in the eye. Instead, I gather up the fabric swatches in front of me and start putting them back in my bag. Is everything okay? He asked, and I turn a brief smile on him. Yeah, fine, why? Because uh, you suddenly stopped talking. He shakes his head and smiles. Sometimes I miss it, you know? The gang, the conflict, roaming the streets all, at all hours of the night just looking for trouble. He says, staring off to the side longingly before he turns to me again. What about you? I guess sometimes, you know? I admit. I think back on the gang and the friends we both spend our time to with. I miss spending time lazing around the roof in the sun, running around town, just going crazy. It was a fun time. Yeah, it was, Nikki says with a smile. It's a shame that things changed so much. I would have liked to stay in touch. Me too. I'm sorry I didn't. I give him a tight smile in return. It's really good to see you again, Nikki. Yeah, it's been great. He nods as he pushes himself off the stage and then helps me down beside him. We should catch up more often. Maybe go for dinner or something. I know the request is perfectly innocent. Two old friends catching up over a meal, but when my thoughts drift to gray, I hesitate. I've already got enough on my plate at the moment. I'm pretty slammed with work, but I'll see you at the play. Maybe we can have a celebratory drink afterwards. I'll bring Sarah too. Sounds great. I'll be saving a seat for you, he says with a smile before we say our goodbyes. Yeah, we don't want to make moves on Nikki. We're trying to get on Gray's good side. We're not doing so good, though. <laughs> with a last glance at the auditorium, I hoist my bag over my shoulder and head back to the store. I step into the back hallway after returning home, ready to head up to the, my apartment and grab some dinner. Meeting with Nikki had been great, and it was nice to see him again after so long, but I couldn't shake off some of the things he had said, particularly about Ivan and Gray. It's no secret that Ivan is a regular at Gray's game nights, but after hearing Nikki's suspicion and knowing Ivan better than I want to, I can't help but wonder why he would never have an, an interest in something as simple as board games. And after thinking about it more in depth, it makes me question why someone like Grey would show just such a big interest in them too. Something doesn't add up. I'm just about to head up the stairs when the back door opens. And the man in the question steps through into the hallway. Grey looks up at the sound of my footsteps, seeming surprised to see me. Hey, I greet him, a little hesitant about the way we parted the last time. Hey, he says as he shuts the door behind him, and to my relief gives me one of those familiar crooked smiles. I barely heard from you at all the past few days. You have been quiet, I say with a hint of disappointment. He rubs at the back of his neck awkwardly, the keys still jingling in his hands. Yeah, I didn't want to disturb you. I don't mind being disturbed a little, I grin, prodding him a little more. I'll keep that in mind, he says with a breathy laugh before pacing over to the basement stairs. Gray, I say out loud before he can disappear completely. I've been thinking, maybe I could sit in on your game night, or game tonight. His eyebrows dip as though that wasn't what he was expecting me to say, and his keys jingle when he tightens his grip on them. Why, uh, why would you want to do that? He asks, and I can tell the request has thrown him off. My eyes narrow at that. I've never seen him look so uncomfortable before. Just to see what it's all about, I press, and in an instant his hesitance disappears, replaced instead by a cool dismissiveness. It's pretty boring. I'm sure you wouldn't like it. That is cold for, I don't want you to be there. So don't ask. <laughs> you don't want me to come? I ask quickly. Doesn't bother me in the slightest, he shrugs. I'm only thinking of you. Are you manipulating me right now? <laughs> a small smile finds its way onto my face and now I'm more determined than ever to secure an invitation to his game night. I think I can handle a couple board games I used to play all the time when I was a kid. Gray watches me for a few seconds weighing up the decision in his head. Eventually he lets out a dramatic sigh. Okay, you can join. Just give me half an hour to get everything set up and be downstairs. I give him a broad smile. Happy he'll let me in on his secretive board game night. Alright, hopefully nothing chaotic happens. Voices echo on the other side of the door as I approach. Though when I lift my hand and knock, they all hush suddenly. I lean a closer ear against the door. Until it flies open in front of me and Gray stands there, raising an eyebrow at me. Glad he can make it, he says with a smile, just for me to enter. And I let out an awkward giggle and follow him down the stairs. I'm a little nervous, to be honest. <laughs> Gray looks suspiciously happy, happier when I enter. Okay, so he's not mad that I'm here. I can never know with men. Michiko. Hello. This is everyone. Everyone Michiko. 
Hi, Jed. It's so lovely to see you. The chorus of greetings rings out with his hand on my back. Greg guides me to a chair set up between himself and Jed at a large round table. Good to see you again, Michiko, he just says with a smile and a nod of his head. Then he leans in closer to ask quietly. Sarah didn't want to come with you tonight? Oh, well, I didn't actually ask her. I had been wondering for the first time if I should have. Me being here was kind of just a whim. Stop pestering my guest, Jed. She's here to play a game. <laughs> Greg waves a hand between us before taking his own seat and facing the table. Players. Jed holds his hands up in front of him innocently says some more. Are you ready? Gray asks. I give him a small nod, anxious yet excited to know what he's going to tell me. So the game is called Dragon Den, he explains. Okay. A glance over the empty table. Where's the board? It doesn't have a board, Gray answers. The pieces? No pieces either. You use your imagination. I frown at that. I've never played a game without a board before. Perhaps I've seriously misunderstood what board games really mean. We do, however, use these. Is it dice? Gray jingles a small pouch in front of me before chipping the contents into his palm and showing me the collection of dice sitting in his hand. Oh, cute. Then he leans back into his seat and speaks to behind me. So this is your favorite game, Chad. I think you should be the den master, he says. He puts the dice back into the pouch and tosses it to his friend. Oh. I couldn't possibly. It was you who introduced me to Dungeon Den. In the first place, he pushes the pouch back to Grey, who scowls at him. I thought it was called Dragon Den, I say. <laughs> what were they calling it? Dungeon Den. <laughs> Jet clears his throat quietly, his eyes shifting from side to side before resting on the table in front of him. Uh. It is. I was just testing you. Ah, okay. Grey snatches up the pouch of dice, still glaring at Jed as he does so. Fine, I'll be the den master. Everyone needs to come with a character. After some simple instructions on how to create our characters, everyone around the table takes a turn describing who they'll be playing as. We end up with a few elves and dwarves, some humans, and even a goblin. When it comes to my turn, everyone looks at me expectantly. Oh, uh, my character's human, I guess. And their profession, Grey asks. Archer. <laughs> I think quietly for a moment, deciding to go with what I know best. A seamstress for the nobles of the court. Let me guess, her name is Michiko, he says dryly. No, it's not. I nudge his shoulder playfully as he chuckles. Iverness, enter your role playing name. Shit. Hmm. It's Romy. <laughs> My gang name, isn't it? Didn't I name myself a Romy? As a gang leader? <laughs> it's gonna be so confusing. Okay, let me, let me not, let me not. Damn, what the fuck do I name myself then? I don't fucking know. I'm a seamstress. What's a cool name, guys? Quick. <laughs> I'm asking like you guys can quickly tell me. Shoot. I don't freaking know. Um, um I need a code name, guys. I'm just go with Melody. Yep. Yep, there we go. Melody. Her name is Melody Answer. All right, Melody, I'll narrate the setting, and then after that, you can start us off, Gray explains. I'm not in agreement, even though I still have zero idea what I'm doing. When the pouch of dice in his hand, he clears his throat dramatically and begins the game. It was a beautiful day in the kingdom of Basementia. <laughs> Snort escapes Jed, his shoulders shaking with quiet laughter. Basementia, really? Oh, shut up. You had your chance to be the den master. Gray fires back at him, and for a moment, I regret sitting between the two of them. As I was saying, it was a beautiful day in the kingdom of Basementia. Yeah, birds were chirping, maidens were singing, etc, etc. I raised an eyebrow at Grey, wondering how many times you'd play Dragon Den before now. There was a small town where a bunch of people live, including all of your characters. The town was right outside the castle walls. Really? So elves, dwarves, and humans all live together in the same town? Jed says in disbelief, holding his arms over his chest. Seems unlikely. Don't forget the goblin, I add. And Grey <laughs> glowers at the pair of us. This is my game. When it's your turn, you can decide who lives together. Jen mumbles something beneath his breath and Gray continues his introduction. Suddenly, an enormous dragon attacks the town. It burns down half the buildings and all of your homes. There's chaos everywhere. Blood, screams, fire. It turns to me all of a sudden. Melody, what do you do? Oh, um, I'm prepared. I quickly rack my mind for some kind of answer. Um, I help people around who are injured or scared. 
I decided... Oh, oh, I held the button. I decided out loud. Not sure what else uh, would do in, this, in that kind of situation. You'll need to roll a 10 or higher to be successful, Gray explains. He rolls the dice on the table in front of him, and as they all scatter, he silently adds the numbers together. 16! You hear a pain cry from nearby, and after searching for the source of the sound, you realize your neighbor is stuck in his house, his leg trapped under a fallen rafter. It was the same neighbor who had stolen one of your chickens just last week. For a split second, you consider leaving him there, but you just can't do it. Braving the flames surrounding you, you leap into the ruins and free that- Free that man! Free the man! <laughs> Dragging him to safety, upon inspecting his leg closer, you notice a nasty gash running up the side of it. Remembering the needle and thread in your home, you head towards the ruin ruined building in search of it. Before you can take another step, the burning building crumbles in front of you. Wouldn't be knocking you to the ground. What? <laughs> I exclaim in surprise and slump back in my chair. Jed, it's your turn, Gray says as he ruffles my hair playfully, laughing softly when I push his hand away. You come across Melody in need of assistance, he says to his friend, who wrinkles his nose in thought. I, Sir Bread. <laughs> Brad, <laughs> help Melody to her feet. You could have come up with a better name than Sir Brad. Graham walks to see Reddy's a dice. It was the best I could do at the time. Okay, okay, Sir Brad. You only need to roll an eight or higher. Gray tosses the dice on the table, adding them up again. And that's seven. You fail to help Melody to her feet. She gives you a dirty look as she pushes herself up and dusts off her dress, wondering why you didn't help her. I tried, Jen protests. Next, Gray ignores him and continues the story. The fire is spreading, blazing so fiercely, it will, so fiercely it will destroy the rest of the town if nothing is done soon. The game moves on to the player next to Jed who scratches his head in thought. Uh, uh, I go to the nearest tavern and order a drink. What the fuck? <laughs> the town is on fire and you're like, fuck it, I'm gonna go out and get me a drink. At a tavern. That's probably gonna be on flames next. He says with a toothy grin and Greg gives him a dumbfounded look. A, d a dragon has destroyed half the town. You're going to go have a drink. Yeah. All right, then. Cray tosses a dice and nods an indication that the task is successful. You successfully locate the nearest tavern, which is miraculously still standing and head inside. The barkeep is nowhere to be found, so you pour yourself a mug of ale. Nice, says the next player. For my turn, I'm going to join him at the tavern. Cray sighs and briefly closes his eyes. The point of the game is to work together and to solve the issue at hand, he says tiredly. Which currently will be the fire and the dragon? Well, we only learned about the game five minutes ago when the men protest. You just learned the game five minutes ago, but the story is there's a fire with a dragon. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some ale, is their mindset. All right, the guy sitting next to the man elbows him quickly and quietly shushes him. Wait, you haven't played this game before? I ask around the table. There's an awkward pause for a gray cuts in. He means the campaign. Each time you play, there's usually a different story. The players all give some kind of half-hearted and honest response, so I'm still frowning. Oh, okay. I turn to Greg catching the end of the death glare he throws across the table at the other guy before he rolls the dice once more. As you enter the tavern, the dragon returns and spews fire over the building. The place collapses and the both of you suffer a nasty, fiery death. Hey! What? <laughs> Two players who have been wiped from the game throw their hands up in outrage. That's what happens when you ignore what's going on around you, Grace says. The shadow of a smile tilting his lips. We go around the table one more time through this story, though the story doesn't go very far and the people of the town are still being ravaged by the imaginary dragon. The players seem to all be as equally confused as I am, which makes me wonder if it really is the first time any of them has played the game. Uh, my turn comes around again and I stop to think what could possibly help our characters in this situation. I rally my companions and arm with them, arm them with whatever weapons we can find, making a final stand against the dragon. I say with bravado. My fellow players give an applause. Oh, risky move! You need at least 19 to pull it off. Gray says with a grimace. He rolls the dice in front of him, adding up the total. 14. You fail to properly arm your allies. As a result, the dragon eats your companion, Gob Goblin. <laughs> the guy who's playing as Gob pounces sits back in his chair. I shrug helplessly and mouths, "I'm sorry, I am." Your turn, Sir Bread. Maybe you pick something useful this time. Gray says cheerfully, seeming to be the only one who's actually enjoying himself. I mean, he's the he's the story director of the whole thing, so he, he I think his role is more fun. I safely take me Melody away and ride off with her into the sunset. The end. Jed says <laughs> with a scowl, and Gray thumps a hand against the table in front of him, making me jump. You can't do that. It's my character. I can do what I want. Jetfire is back. You can't just ride off and leave everyone else to die. Well, I don't want to play this game anymore. 
Greg grits his teeth as he clenches the dice between his fists as Nashville's flaring wide. Fine, let's call it a night, shall we? He pouts as he tips the ba dice back into the pouch, ignoring the grumbles of the players around us. Sounds good to me, Jay says with a grin. I look between them confused. With a gay night coming to an end, I hang back as everyone leaves, saying their goodbyes to Greg at the door. Interesting! The two of us leave the basement together, and when he turns back to lock the door, I linger for a little longer. I had fun, I say, when he turns to me again, earning a disbelieving look from him. Really? Yeah, we should play Dragon Den again sometime. Even if the game was confusing and chaotic, it was still a lot of fun. I haven't had a good break like that in a long time. Hey, sure. Grace agrees with a confused smile. Why are you here? A sound at the top of the stairs draws our, draws our attention, and we turn to find Ivan standing there, peering down at the two of us. My stomach drops at the sight, completely unprepared for another confrontation with the man. Oh, look, I finally decide to show up, Grace says as he heads up the stairs towards his friend. A strange feeling settles over me as I follow, my tongue growing heavy in my mouth. I don't want to see Ivan. Especially not after what had happened the last time he had come to the store, and after all the suspicions that Nikki has put in my head. I haven't told Grey what had happened that night, thinking that I can handle myself well enough, but that doesn't stop me from being wary of what Ivan is capable mm. of. Looks like I missed out on a fun night, Ivan draws, and there's something strange about his tone of voice. He looks around Grey and leers at me, and it's only now that I see the puffy eyes and the drunken smile. Oh. Hey, pretty thing, he grins, revealing a big white teeth. Mm. Alright, Ivan, time to head home. Grey puts a hand on the other man's shoulder and spins him towards the door. Ivan looks at Grey in confusion, seeming reluctant to leave. We cancel the game, he asks him. Game's over. You should have shown up earlier, Grey replies. Mm. He told me it was being pushed back to nine. I spent the last few hours drinking at the bar on the corner while I waited, Ivan protests. Did I? I could have sworn I told you to show up at seven, Grey says, and I get the impression that's not what he had said at all. I don't know why exactly he would have wanted to keep Ivan away tonight, but I can't say I'm not grateful uh. for it. No, no, you said... I think you said nine. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Ivan carries on as he plants his feet in the doorway. Oh, well, there's always next time, right? Grey says with finality. It takes a little more convincing on Gray's part, but I watch quietly as he gently pushes Ivan through the door, wishing him a good night before locking it behind him. With Ivan finally out of the way, Gray turns back to me. You okay? He asks. Yeah, I say with a reassuring smile. He throws a concerned look towards the door, but returns to me with a smile. You should be careful around that guy. Why are you even friends with him? I can't stop myself from asking, earning a soft sigh from him. I want to say we're friends, but I prefer keeping him close, close enough that I can keep an eye on him. It makes sense, and I start to realize that Nikki had it all wrong. The two of them aren't friends at all. Relief washes over me. Gray is different from how he was ten years ago. He's more than just a phantom. You'll tell me if he does anything that makes you uncomfortable, right? Alright, girl. Please tell him right now. This is your moment. <laughs> Gray adds when I don't say anything. Of course, I say with a nod, and he seems satisfied with the assurance. At least it seems Gray is keeping an eye out for me. I really want to be able to trust him. And tell him... <laughs> Tell him? <laughs> Tell him about that night? Hello? What the fuck? But anyway, that was fun. That was a cute little uh, chapter. I enjoyed that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.